and welcome to our Conscious Leader Circle, where we meet once a month to support each other through these epic and changing times, to be more grounded, energized, and focused, or as I like to say, centered, connected, and conscious. And today we have the most amazing guest speaker, Richard Gear, Master Astrologer, who is going to not only provide insight into 2024, but insight into your soul. So I'm very excited to uh, introduce Richard and take it away, Richard. All right. Yeah, I, this is um, a really momentous time. Actually, today, um, uh, Pluto is going into Aquarius. It's, it's, going, it's been going back and forth between Aquarius and Capricorn, but uh, it's going into Aquarius really for the first time since the French Revolution, the Bill of Rights, and all the 1700 stuff that helped establish the whole idea of democracy and individual rights and no one has a right to lord over you you know and also pluto and aquarius is uh, which is 20 years um coming up it is a questioning of everything it's a bringing of light to everything it's a um there's a great line from the 1700s um one who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities and so the the letting go of the absurdities and the bigotries and the and the dogmatic belief systems, letting go of the hierarchies uh, and people saying we need real community, we need a world that works for everyone, we need to question every system that's out there to see whether it really works for us. It's it's a brilliant time the next twenty years, and that time set the foundation for who we are now. You know, I mean. When you, the American and French revolutions, you know, and and what and what they brought, and then when then when the Americans came up with their constitution, their Bill of Rights, and and the French came up with their Declaration of the Rights of Man, it was a brand new world, you know. And similarly, we are at that place now, which is no surprise to anybody who's been keeping their eyes open. Um, and so, um, and that's and so individually for us, it's also just a sense of um, and it's different for everybody's chart how those transformations are going to come for them. But that said, anything is possible. Well, it also helps usher in the age of Aquarius, which is the next two thousand one hundred and sixty years, which is to me the last two thousand years. Uh, age of Pisces was about all of us learning divine love, learning that there's a oneness to everybody. But the problem was. It didn't respect boundaries, <laughs> you know, got to embrace our religion or else, you know, and even though it's nice to go beyond race consciousness and beyond your little tribalism and we're all one. Yeah, we're all one, but I do it my way. Thank you. So get out of my way, you know, and so the next this age is coming in the age of Aquarius is about divine intelligence. We are all creators. We answer only to our inner light. And that is what freedom is to me, is that ability to answer to your inner light no matter what. And so. And, and, you know, it ties in with technology. It ties in with unlimited inventiveness, which can be very disorienting, <laughs> you know, AI and everything else coming in. But it's like, OK, how in touch with that higher intelligence am I? How guided am I? How truly the way I put it, the creator created us to create. And so when you get the hierarchies out, I, I wrote a piece recently. Um, uh, the pagan says to the patriarch, um, I don't like to call the deity Lord. And he goes, so what do you, what do you call him? He said, I call her sweetheart. And, uh, and the inspiration of, of the poet and the, the healing energy of the healer, all of that, that's divinity to me. You know? And so to, to make it very practical, right here, right now, not pie in the sky when you die, right here, right now, what is real, what is satisfying, what is just dogma and opinion, and what is reality? And so science also comes in, in under, under Aquarius, too. And there was an explosion of science in the 1700s, of applied science, the Industrial Revolution, the Enlightenment, just being able to question everything, which was unheard of, you know. And in the one last thought about that before I go to the other planets, you know, that the in the U.S., uh, uh, the Bill of Rights is really a universal document. But, you know, that that you can do your own religion, you can say whatever you want, you can assemble, you can petition, you can. What's the other one? Uh, press the press you know you can publish whatever you want you know that was really the beginning of waking up in many ways you know and so the next level of waking up is now upon us the next level of creating a world where everybody matters everybody contributes um and you can find your own way of living as long as you're not squashing somebody else anyway so that's pluto and aquarius is a is a tremendous event you know coming in 
And then parallel, so Pluto spends 20 years in Aquarius. Uh, Uranus spends seven years in a sign. And it hasn't been in, in Taurus since the 1930s. And it's an uncomfortable place. Creative Uranus, which rules the age of Aquarius that's coming. It's, it's the most uncomfortable sign is Taurus because Uranus is the eternal inventor and Taurus wants stability, you know? And that was what his 30s were about. Where we have to reinvent civilization so we can have stability, you know? And so, um, and, um, <clears throat> and so that's going to finish up by 2025 and then Uranus goes into Gemini, which is going to be very creative. Um, and then the biggie, um, Neptune, which is finishing up 14 years in its own sign of Pisces for the first time since the mid-1800s. The period between the revolutions of 1848 and the rising up of labor and then the American Civil War, that whole period of 14 years was that universal compassion, everybody matters, let's, you know, working class unite, let's not be the slaves of whoever's controlling the money supply, you know. And so um, Neptune in, in Pisces is the vision. And for those of us who are highly spiritual, Neptune in Pisces, which is, you know, it's going to come right to the very end of Pisces and then come and then retrograde back and then goes into Aries next year. And um, and it's going to be we're very close to like totally reinventing civilization. But this is the time, like, make sure you're spiritually in tune. You know, as the I Ching would say, one who acts from these deep levels makes no mistakes. Make sure you uh, you've practiced that letting go that ability to just be present to everything before you start jumping on everything and do 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 you know and so saturn in pisces which is a 30 year cycle so once every two so two and a half years in pisces right now saturn and neptune in pisces and then first month of spring Mars and Pisces, Mars spends two years in a sign, roughly. <clears throat> it's going to be a fantastic chance to really, really get this surrender thing down. You know, allow yourself to be adored, loved, and supported by the universe. And start from there. You know, I, I, I mean, literally, I, how many times in my life have I just, even that I've been at a gathering, you know, and I would just meditate for a while, open my eyes, and, and some beautiful woman I'd never seen before wanted to talk to me. You know, it's like, that's not the usual way to pick up girls. Close your eyes and meditate, you know. Um, but that's, it's just the universe loving you. It's just the universe loving you. That is normal and natural. But when we're caught up in the, the noise of the head, and I just had a healing from a, a rare cold. And to me, I knew it was, it was in the head, that there were aggressive thoughts in my head that needed to be cleared, you know, and hurts to be processed and all that. So I had a, I had a fantastic transformation out of my cold, you know. And so that the 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 mastery of especially now with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces for another year and change um, to really get down our connection to the infinite, to really understand you can start this game of time space already winning. You can bring the party to the party. You can be the party just by being present, just by vibrating to experience myself as that transcendental unity vibrating pure consciousness who has a personality, mind, emotions, five senses, the body, you know, that I'm not a body with a mind and a bunch of emotions that croaks. I mean, yeah, that's my vehicle. That's the finiteness. That's what makes everything precious. Definitely. But my first foot is in infinity. My first foot is in that connection, you know, and so, so that my reactivity, oh, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Ah, what am I going to do? Slow down, shut up, you know, go inside, get whole, you know, and, and really look, okay, how is this perfect? Where is it trying to lead me? And so um, I did a quick, um, quick story. Um, you know, I was about to be dropped off in the country and all of a sudden my cell phone didn't work. I was being, the, you know, away from any cell phone repair. I'm like, what are we going to do? And I sort of did a nice little spell in my the woman who was driving me. And uh, and, then, and then all of a sudden I knew uh, she said she stopped at uh, the car in town and said, OK, let's find where the repair shop is. And and I go and I go into the first store there and he just points me through the back open door. It's right there. OK. And and I and I and I go over there and, and I show it to her uh, and she fixes it before I even can go over to my driver and bring her back to, to where I just got to. It's already fixed. No charge. 
okay <laughs> like boom just like that and i and i said to my driver my friend i said do you realize after we did the spell after we got into that zone for real, that you didn't just pick the right block you picked the right inch <laughs> to park okay <laughs> That, and you know, it's like don't forget that this 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 one. Okay, this is how life works when you're in tune. Just a problem just disappears just like that. No charge, nothing. You know, it took five minutes to fix it. Okay, and so to understand, we can play this life on a whole other level. You know, and and so and so, um, <clears throat> yes, this universal compassion is kicking in Neptune and Pisces. That's great. You know, Saturn and Pisces is like, what's the discipline? How do you make that consistent? What does it take to be constantly anchored in, uh, what's that line? The treasure that thieves can't break in and steal and that moth and rust don't corrupt. You know, the pearl of great price that's inside us, heaven right now, you know? And how do we <clears throat> keep moving through our reactivity? How could they possibly do such a thing? Well, you, know, you ain't no saint, kid, you know? Um, how? Well, that's where everyone's at. That's where we're at. Okay. Is that that time we're all bozos on this bus? You know, you are the light of the world and we're all bozos on this bus. The paradox of the human being. <laughs> like I said, if every time you threw the ball, it went in the basket, it wouldn't be interesting. You know, you'd step back a few meters just to make it more difficult. Right. And that's the way I see this life. It's got to be, it's got to have contrast. It's got to have challenges. So anyway, so, so Neptune and Saturn and Pisces, when Saturn goes into Aries, <clears throat> it's going to be like May... Uh, Saturn and Neptune go into Aries in, in 2025. Um, then new things began. It's a 30 year cycle. Saturn went into Aries, let's say, hate Ashbury. They created a whole new culture, the counterculture. You know, um, by the time Woodstock happened, it was in Taurus. They settled into this counterculture. You know, this, this we ain't, we're here to stay, folks. You know, and similarly, Saturn and Aries in the late 90s, the internet, a brand new reality comes in that changes everything. You know, and so, um, so when Saturn goes into Aries in a couple of years, then <clears throat> um, actually, I mean, say a couple of years, but yeah, yeah, that um, it, it's a brand new everything. It's a, you know, it's a boldness time. OK, look at this. You didn't see this before, did you? You know, and, and a brand new 30 year cycle begins. And so all of this is coming. But this next year, feel it, dream it. Let it become you. Feel what spirit is wanting to give you and to give through you. Feel that divine love. Feel your, your highest aspirations. Okay? And, and feel how good this life is. My, my teacher, when he talks about life, he's not talking about the events of life. He's talking about the life force inside you. You know, that's life, you know? Um, what's that line? My atheist sister, there was a quote from Dylan Thomas, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. <laughs> and, and so, um, now what planet have I left out here? Yes, Neptune, Pluto, Saturn, um, <clears throat> that, that let's see, uh, in the spring, Jupiter and Uranus merge, which happens once every 14 years in Taurus. And so again, earth solid grounding and then jupiter goes into jupiter spends a year in a sign goes into gemini and that creative energy starts to kick in so we're really at the edge of something when all three outer planets are going to be changing signs roughly the same time the whole story is going to totally utterly change it's not going to be so much about security and form and how do i avoid getting sick or you know it's going to it's going to be into how do we invent civilization how do we invent the way it needs to be how do we step out I'm hearing in my head, sunrise, surprise, civilized man, you were keeper to me, now your animal is free. And so it's going to be extraordinarily um, creative, inventive time, which allows us, the humans, to be what they're really made to be. You know, we are this incredible fusion of creator and creature, you know, of God and animal, you know, and the uniqueness of this species. And I've got a whole play about the planets all getting together to decide what to do about earth you know wouldn't be one particular species on the earth what it humans they were born to make trouble they were born to be gods to create whatever they want i hope there's a difference they don't seem to know the difference and and so it's this the the planets are deciding how to get through to the humans just the way that 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 venus 
you know, her son Cupid will zap you and you fall in love. What if Mars's daughter zapped you and you became self-assertive or Uranus's daughter zapped you and you became brilliant? You know, how do we fully embrace all the powers that are inside us? I mean, my whole vocation is to mirror to people their inner genius. Who's really in there? And what is it you're really wanting? And what is it that is your natural gifts? You know, and how does this life want to be played? What is, because a chart is a chart of both your character and your story. And my job is to crack the code of, of the two, you know. What is, what is the story? How does it draw out your character? What's the heroic adventure you were born for? And where are the challenges wanting to take you? Where are your desires wanting to take you? And what is the ultimate movie? You know, yours. And what does this really want to become? Both on an individual level, but now it's like on a societal level. What does this want to become? What were the humans made for? And how do you create a garden that grows humans? How do you create a society where the humans are more important than the bucks or the, or the you know, and, and where <clears throat> the things we really need to know to truly bring these 10,000 years or more of human civilization to something worth passing on to the grandkids? You know, this is a momentous time. And Pluto and Aquarius is the perfect time to totally reinvent the whole game. It, we really can bring in that Aquarian sense of the balance between community and individuality. How do you create communities where you become more yourself, not less yourself? You know, because the, the community is not run by some hierarchy. It's a community of individual sovereign beings who are responsible. They don't pollute the environment. They're responsible. They don't rip off their workers, you know? And, and how does one create that collective power? It could just be, where you where you put your money you know uh okay these guys employ child labor to make chocolate we won't buy their stuff you know how do, you know how does it what is it like to feel truly powerful the powerful the power that that comes from the unbeatable power what i call and i'll complete this with this um the three superpowers that higher intelligence the guidance that my driver had when she you know, parked in the perfect place, you know, I mean, literally, the uh, walk straight into the business there, and bam, just like that, five minutes later, we had it fixed, you know, to be so in tune that the whole universe supports you because you support the whole universe, because you've let go of the reactive ego mind and let in that perfect intelligence. That's Uranus, the, the higher mind, the first superpower, perfect guidance. And then the second superpower, Neptune, which is total inner fulfillment, beyond anything this world can offer. And if you know that happiness is always yours, then happiness is not what you're looking for in this world. It's what you're bringing to this world. And that means you start from abundance, which is, mean, which is your happiness. That's the only abundance that I recognize. You start from the abundance, and therefore you attract abundance. You know, you totally beat the karmic game. And then, so that's the, the intelligence level, the joy and, and, heart, and heart level, and then the power level. How do you align yourself with the Tao, so that everything works for you because you're working with everything. You're reading the room. You're feeling that which wants to be, and you're giving without hanging on to anything. Okay, this is what the universe is asking me to give here, you know? And that generosity that comes from being interconnected is it's just unlimited, and it's irresistible also because you're just available, okay? Who, you know? And it's not even like, I got I gotta, who needs me now? Who needs me now? No, 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 no. You know, it's just you just read it, you know, one being my, you know, I got my body, but it's one of many bodies. I feel what's around me. I feel what's being asked of me. You know, what is it I'm meant to give? And then everything starts to click all of a sudden while you're busy giving your next job opportunity shows up or your next relationship shows up or whatever, because you're in the groove of the one who loves you, which is the big all. And so that's to me, that's the three superpowers. And then when the humans start to master those, then they're truly creators, you know, and everyone's got a different take on them. Anyway, so that's uh, that's a, a fast overview of the coming year. Um, and and the, the outer three planets are in a beautiful aspect right now, 60, 60, 120, all three outer planets. And that's very rare because they all have their different cycles. You know, Pluto's 248 years, Neptune's 165, etc., so um um what was i going to say uh it's, so the 
the sense of compassion, the sense that we're all one is, is kicking in with Neptune and Saturn in, in Pisces. And when they move into Aries, the need to truly turn that compassion into brave action to totally reinvent civilization starts to kick in, you know, because Aries is a doing energy and that's by 2025. But but mm -hmm. Neptune comes so close. It's like 29 degrees, 56 minutes of Pisces, <laughs> you know, the very cusp of Aries. And then it goes backwards, you know. And so to really look at that vision of what could be, you know, um, the last degree of Pisces, where Neptune's going to be for the first time in 165 years, um, three of the beat, the, the beats who helped reinvent civilization in the 50s, uh, uh, Kerouac, Ginsburg, and Corso, they all had the last degree of Pisces in, the, in their charts, you know. And so it's the perfect time to really be looking at, on a personal level, what does my life want to be? You know, what and 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 again, it, it's from a stillness place, not a grasping place. OK, from a place of what makes my heart sing to even contemplate. That's a sign that heaven's behind it. It's a it's a fullness that is non grasping. It's not like it's 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 where excitement and peace come together. You know, and that's the key to have both at the same time whether you call it the Tantra or whatever word you want to use for it, where um, you're full of juice, but it's not over-emotional, okay? It, it's not psyched up, you know? It's, it's solid. It's solid. And you're able to, and that juice, when we're in that juice, that Pisces, what Pisces is all about, the last sign, when we're in that juice, the thoughts that come from that juice are channeled thoughts. That's literally how I do my job. You know, I stare at the math and I stare at the chart and I look at it and I ponder it and I got it. And then I turn on the mic, you know, um, there's a moment where we know that we know. And the thing that knows is not the rational mind. That's a computer. You know, the thing that knows, knowing that, you know, and it's when we follow this, that we our faith increases. Oh, man, that worked out. You know, I'm glad I called her at that moment because. That opened this door to this thing. We began to understand that our destiny is looking for us. You know, that, that we are the heroes of a story. And this life is meant to be magnificent, but we got to think like what I call a spiritual trillionaire. You know, that we have it all. We have it all, but what do we want? You know, giant cafeteria here. What really, what is the ultimate? You know, and, and each to me, each planet of the 11, if you count the nine planets and the sun and the moon and Earth, you know, is a different need that we need to satisfy. You know, each planet matters, you know, um, <clears throat> and uh, and so have a clear intellect, Mercury, to have a, a deep soul and, and an authentic self. That's the moon to be feel like we're sovereign and fully in charge of our life. That's the sun. You know, to feel stable and solid and full of integrity and we're doing we are who we say we are, Saturn. To be full of enthusiasm for the possibilities and wisdom about where to go, Jupiter. To have the bravery and the initiative to just do it. That's Mars. You know, et cetera, you know. And when they're all turned on, and, and this is what education should be. The education in these 11 powers that make life work. And that's what I'm working on, you know. I call them 11 healths, 11 eases, the absence of which are the diseases. You know, if you're behind on the rent, the Saturn is like, yeah, I'm not feeling very secure right now. You know, <laughs> uh, girlfriend doesn't look like she's very solid right now. Uh, that's a Saturn thing, you know. And so to be aware, to crack the code of our own lives, you know. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, and how do you create a civilization where this is normal, where this health is 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 key? You know, I haven't had a, an aspirin over fifty years. You know, that that that. What does it take to cultivate all of these? So there's a. Um, can we have that in a chart? What we get from each planet. So in a chart, you mean written down? <laughs> like like yeah. Oh, I'm I'm not on mute. Uh -huh. no, you are. Like yeah. Mercury, intellect, moon, soul. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I can, I can write, I can draw it up. I've said it many different ways, but yeah, I, I think I wrote years ago on a on a page, but I haven't. Uh, I don't have it right at hand. But um, um, 
yeah, I can work on that, you know, um, to, to uh, redo it now in my current voice. <laughs> um, and so the musical play I have, you know, is, is all about that, that they're all the, the planners are trying to get together so the humans can become what humans were meant to be. And I don't think anything's really going to work in this world until we get that, you know. Um, and and like, for example, just Mercury, the ability to to have a clear grasp of what is true as opposed to what your opinions are, you know, as I put it. You know, and 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 well, and that's why it's hard to have political discussions, for example, because people can't tell the difference between opinion and a fact. Okay, and the way I put it is, when's the last time you had a breakfast of scrambled opinions and toasts, and you got your four door drove your four door opinion to work so you could earn a thousand opinions to pay your rent on your opinion of an apartment? You know, <laughs> opinions exist between your ears, and facts exist everywhere else. <laughs> and and so, what does it take? What kind of language, which is also Mercury? You know, uh, what kind of language uh, does it take to create a real, um, uh, how can I put it, uh, a real communication that goes somewhere? People, we, we need to agree on what what's real, what's the facts, you know? Anyway, so as far as, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I could go, put it this way, <clears throat> that I divide the, uh, the, the 11 planets into four groups. There's the three superpowers, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Higher intelligence, higher love and joy, and higher power. And there's there's a secular version of that too. But you know those they're the transformational planets. When they visit you, you you make major changes in your life, or you suffer bad. You know that's your range to Pluto. Then there's how to be a self. Those three are about how to transcend the self and tap into the infinite. How to be a self is the sun, moon, and earth. I'm a I'm an animal body. That's Earth. I'm an animal body who's a part of nature, whether even if I'm walking on concrete every day, uh, that's Earth. To feel that animality and what that body needs, that I am a unique self. That is my inner world. That is the key to being intimate with anybody else. I can't let you into my inner world if I'm not into my inner world. And so that the moon is that deep underlying feeling of self. You know, when someone's being authentic or not, that's the moon. You know, actors work with that. They have to find the soul of that character, you know, and be it. So that's the moon, the inner life. And then the sun is the outer life. Am I expressing myself? Am I bringing it? Am I a lot? Am I visible? Hi, guys, I'm here, you know. Um, and and uh, so am I a self? And that's really, really key. And that's what the last couple hundred years have been about, is giving room for people to be themselves, you know. You couldn't, you know, even in the, as, by the early 60s even, you you didn't dance alone. You couldn't just dance any way you wanted. You had to dance the the twist or the this and had to have a partner. And, you know, and now it's like, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> just go out there and move. That's to be a self. And so and then you have Jupiter and Saturn, which are the big picture of life. Jupiter is what's your vision? What's your values? Where are you going before you croak? And Saturn is, OK, how do you get there? Jupiter is, I want to be a rock star. And Saturn is, OK, what you're going to practice, you know, and, you know, and, and what's your instrument and how are you going to do it and where are you going to get the gigs? And so Jupiter and so Jupiter and Saturn are the managers of life. They're the navigator and the pilot, basically, you know, um, they're Merlin and Arthur, in a sense. You know, one person has the reins of power. The other one has the wisdom. You know, that's Jupiter, Saturn, the big picture. And then there's Mercury, Venus, Mars. You want something, Venus. OK, figure out how to get it, Mercury. Go do it, Mars. You know, that's what we learned as little kids is how to operate those three, you know, but there's a higher level to all of these, by the way, because Mercury at the higher level, the thinker, Mercury's the magician in the Turo. If you're a thinker, you're a magician. And so that ability to to focus into the world of ideas and what you want to 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 bring into being, you know, um, and and so and a lot of spiritual folks neglect uh, because there's this dance, um, there's the rational mind. Mercury, then there's the higher intuitive mind, Uranus. And how do you balance them? When do you just show up and get the job done, Mercury? And when do you improvise, Uranus? And then Venus and Neptune. Venus is your desires and your what you love in this world, finite. And Neptune is the infinite universal love. You know, transcending desires, which at, at the extreme, if you turn it into a war, then you get really ascetic and stoic and, oh, I don't need chocolate anymore. I'm a yogi, whatever, you know, um, and that gets a little dry. And then and then Mars and Pluto. Mars is just do it. 
Pluto is align with the doing. Set your sail to go with the winds and the universe will do it for you and through you. And so I, mean, I could, I mean, I could go on and on, but there's like 55 pairs of planets and all of the planets got to get along if we're going to be healthy human beings. So I've got a whole other thing about the pairs. How does this side of you get along with that side of you? And how do you create that wholeness? And how do you create a society that doesn't repress any of those? So. <laughs> well, thank you, Richard. That was magnificent as always. And we have some really wonderful comments in the chats. Mm -hmm. And if anyone would like to share what, what your first takeaway is, what, what your first thought of inspiration or, or insight is from Richard sharing. Um, and for me, it's to really embody that which you already are. So we talk a lot about embodying that which you want to become and the qualities that <clears throat> you desire and that um, you admire. Um, but as Richard was saying, it's already within us to awaken and to connect with. And so that's part of reclaiming our sovereignty as we go forward uh, for the next, what did Richard say, 2000 years. So this is an epic time to live on the planet. And each of us are here because we are courageous, strong, highly evolved spiritual beings who are ready and able uh, to fulfill our destiny. Um, and so thank you, Richard. That was uh, magical um, and insightful as always. Does anybody want to share any insight um, have any questions for Richard? Do you want to start in the chats and see what other comments are in the chats, Richard? Mm -hmm. Oh, Susanna, go ahead. Yeah, but uh, wait a moment. I have to put this hand down. So, okay. Um, yeah, uh, what resonated with me a lot which what i picked up um, essentially is uh, the combination of peace and excitement uh, you have the peace and you have the, the excitement and the passion and that should come together and um, uh, i would just like to know richard if you could elaborate on that a bit more because it's exactly uh something i'm currently working on and a little bit struggling with because I have the feeling and I have the impression I have a lot of things that I can do and want to do and projects and all uh, uh, all sorts of stuff in my life and I always have the feeling I can go this direction then there is the peace or I can go that direction and then I have the excitement and I want it both and I need it both and I, I like it both so uh for me, that's actually a tricky thing to be, uh, you know, um, to 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 get this together uh, yeah. somehow. And maybe maybe you could elaborate a bit absolutely. more on that. Absolutely, yeah. Passion without clinging is the key. You know, I had a a lovely uh, five months romantic connection, and then it became clear that we didn't have the didn't have what it takes to be partners. Um, but I'm like, okay, now what do I do with this energy? Okay. And it, the if you deny passion, peace really becomes numbness, okay? It's not really a healthy peace, shall we say. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> and, the, and the opposite extreme. If you're clinging to the object of your passions, then that's not, it, it, it actually isn't any good for other people either, you know? <laughs> and so, so what I did was, you know, I was just going inside. I said, there's still something I know that, that there's something I'm supposed to give to this woman. You know, I can feel it, you know? And and then finally, it just burst through me in the middle of the night, and I, and I wrote to her. We're, you know, two thousand kilometers apart right now, and it's just like you know, I I just want to support her in in her evolution. You know that there's and I just said it in certain ways that it just flowed through poetically and really beautifully, and where where it just the renaissance of the relationship began to come in. I looked at the chart; it was you know appropriate. You know, the chart of when we met, right? That everything has a chart. Right? And it can help guide you. Why did I meet this person? What 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 are we supposed to be doing together? And so the passion is not a pa it's not I, you know I said listen I don't need to go to bed with you I don't need to be your man I don't need to live with you any of that okay but I could love you a little more in a way that makes a difference and she got it you know and it opened up the communication because you, what we're trying to find is what is the one what does the one power want because one power is desire. 
it, the eternal creation of the universe. And then it creates this species called the humans who are meant to embody that power, you know? And, and so, and so for me, it's what my teacher called the desireless desire. And what that is, he said, you know, you can desire a constant connection to that inner thing. You can desire the things of this world. It won't work. You got to desire a third thing. And then both of those things will chase you around. Okay. And so, um, <clears throat> And so when you look at what do I really desire? I just desire to feel good. You know, I desire to be engaged. And so when I look at what does the eternal love that's in me want to give to her? How does she, her soul want to be supported? What is the real purpose of this relationship? Which is the beauty of a relationship chart. Because you can get underneath your ego and her ego and all of that and go, what is it that's wanting to happen with us that heaven totally supports and so to, to desire, um, you know, I, you know, I have two scripts that I want to get produced out there. OK, and I have some film connections that keep showing up. The more I surrender, they keep showing up. Next thing you know, I'm sitting in front of the co-founder of Alliance Atlantis pitching. How did I get here? You know, <laughs> you know, and picking his brain because I'm not going to get to hit, see this guy again. You know, and so how do I let in? Like that started. I just I came back you know, from a run and I was just meditating on the pillow. And I said, I am now sharing everything I want to share with the world. That's the selfless desire in a sense. I'm now sharing everything I want to share with the world. And then immediately I get taken right to the co-founder of Alliance Atlantis, right? <laughs> and, you know, executive producer, the 13 Emmy nominated Joan of Arc TV movie, you know, and, and, and then you walk it through, but you walk it through like, okay, I don't know what wants to happen here, but let's, let me bring my best, you know? And so to have a desire and hand it over, because the right desires are already supported by the universe. You don't have to make them happen. You just got to stop blocking them. You know, I mean, the times I've, it's just insane. You know, one time I, I kept getting the queen of pentacles, which among other things can be a, a rich woman. And I go out for a jog and I pass this really nice looking house and I just go, okay, queen of pentacles, you want to come in? Come in. So it's a desire, but it's also a let go, right? Within seconds, I kid you not, Within seconds, a woman in a Jaguar stops and I'm jogging. You know, I don't get picked up jogging. I don't get offered rides while I'm jogging ever. OK, a woman in a Jaguar stops and says, you want to ride? Now, dumb me, here's, do you need a ride? I'm half a block from home. I don't need a ride. She's not doing it out of charity. She's a bored rich woman. OK, <laughs> And so, but and many times I've done a spell and it's manifested the situation, but I didn't know how to handle it because I was a little ahead of myself, right? <laughs> and that's and spells will do that. You get ahead of yourself. You get into this brand new world to play in. So what I'm saying is that if I desire what the universe what the universe desires, then I don't have to cling to it. I'm just accepting it. I'm allowing it. I'm letting it in as a state. And the first purpose of a spell or a prayer is to change your state, not to make something happen. It will happen. As soon as you change your state, sometimes instantaneously, like that one, that was one of the most outrageous manifestations of my life. It's like, what? You know, Jaguar. And so, and so what I'm saying is that to have this intense passion and hand it over, you know, and, and, and like one time I was with someone in, in her kitchen and I could tell that a kiss wanted to happen. <laughs> All right. And, but I just sort of let go. And just got into the state and then she kissed me. You know, it's like that moment when you simply allow, you desire something and then hand it over. I want this. I let in this. I can see myself as the guy who can have this or be this or share this and live this. And I say that it's already happening. If I say it's already happening and I let it go, that's when it manifests. You know, and so I simply accept it in. And that we understand what I really want is to play life in a fully alive and conscious way. Nothing else is a substitute for that. You know, how many times have I manifested? Again, I've manifested something and had nothing, didn't had no idea what to do with it. This is great. How do I do it? You know, um, and so the ability to relax, to let in that what is yours is yours and nothing can keep it from you. And I think the sense of immediacy, I want that now. When I say now, I'm not going to force it. I'm saying this is gorgeous. I let it into my experience now. As St. Paul put it, faith is the substance of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen. And that faith, that ability to, to, that's Jupiter, the ability to believe, the ability to get behind something, not a dogmatic belief, but a belief that you can walk, a belief that you can you know, learn to drive a car, 
the ability to let in automatically gives enthusiasm. Letting in, you know, I, you know, as I think of, you know, hanging out with some film producer in Malibu or, you know, or whatever, you know, it, it doesn't feel good. Does it feel good? Actually, uh, yes. Okay. What are you doing together? Creating something that benefits society. That's that's my thrill. You know, bringing bringing the magic that's inside me and giving it to the world. That's what my teacher called the desireless desire. If you desire for the power to use you and come through you, then the bliss automatically comes to you. You don't have to try to meditate all the time. You know, if you desire just, I don't care what I do, um, I care about the quality of the vibration I bring to it. And if that vibration, that vibration will automatically make me say the right things, like right now, you know, it'll automatically make me do the right things. All of a sudden I stop into a store and, and the co coincidental connection that forms my destiny comes out of that. It can be a single phone call. It can be just a sudden impulse in the middle of the night, you know, to know that that connection is what I really desire. But I can't grab the connection. I can invoke it. I can allow it because otherwise I'll be connected to something inferior, something mediocre. And I wrote a poem the other night about that. Yep. Yeah, thank you. That was that was wonderful as always. Um, and being in that flow without attachment, right? And they and to have the faith and the inner knowing um, that we're part of that, as you mentioned in the beginning, the infinite, the infinite universe that we're infinite eternal beings. And we're always in a flow of infinite universal energy. So, so was that helpful, Susanna? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, yes. I think I think I got the key is uh, you know the the sur surrendering and uh, being uh, aligned and uh, in the flow and in the now. So, and then it it clicks together together and so I I think I I, I got it. I. Uh, I also f found that really interesting what you mentioned about the scripts and all that because I'm currently uh, developing a fantasy TV series and looking for funding and things, uh, but we don't have everything ready yet, uh, but it's slowly uh, coming and uh, the interesting thing about that is that I've been at, you know, uh, working at that on the side for a few years and uh, there was some interesting stuff happening uh, um, regarding the timing because I connected with people uh, long before and um, somehow uh, they are now involved and it somehow came together, but not at the time I thought it would. Or, or I made my first attempt, but at, and then I thought, okay, that may not work out, so let's look somewhere else and now uh last year for example then uh, someone came in for being the director and things like that uh be because you just i had we had been in touch but suddenly responded differently to something i said on uh, something she had said uh, uh, like that so that, that that was interesting for me because i thought oh interesting now it flows in and it connects and it's just a year later you know so it's yeah i found that very interesting so thank you very much well, I love right. that, you know, being in flow, having that connection and that faith, right? And and trust in yourself and in the universe and and that we're all here as as I mentioned, highly evolved conscious, you know, spiritual beings to live our destiny. And and now's the time. Now's the time to uh welcome that into our lives and feel safe and secure um in that freedom. Anybody else before we go into our Reiki, long distance Reiki and guided uh, meditation with Richard? Any, any one last Martin? Oh, Martin is just clap, clapping, clap, not just, but clapping. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, any, any other insights, questions for Richard while he's here with us today? Anything in the comments, Richard, that you wanted to respond to? No, they're just mainly just acknowledgments, I think. Mm -hmm. I think Kate mentioned something about peace. Uh, what was that? Something about peace and numbers. I if, we, <laughs> if we deny passion, peace becomes numbness. Yeah. Oh, sure. numbness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that's that's amazing. There's a lot of spiritual folks. Spiritual folks are fairly flat because they're denying passion, the fire element in Tarot. 
you know, and and um, the need to balance the fire element, the air element, the earth and the water is so key. You got to be able to play in all four fields, you know. Um, well, to me, fire is aliveness, chi, energy, you know, passion, you know. Oh, Martin has a question or comment or insight. Martin. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Martin. Are you uh, timing out? No, I don't have the website uh, currently. Um, I will in the next couple of years, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that your question, Martin? Or did you? No, it's Daniel. Mm -hmm. Oh, Daniel. Martin, are you able to share over audio? Maybe he stepped away. Okay. <laughs> okay, anybody else quickly? There he is. Oh, yeah. there's Martin. Martin's back. How come your sound isn't happening? Um, we're not hearing you, Martin. Martin, we don't, we can't hear you. You have to unmute. Or there's something going on. Something in the sound is not happening, even though you're not muted. Y yeah, natal and transit readings. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's always a combination of the two. I can always focus on whatever you want to focus on, you know. But otherwise, I just look at what I feel is most important for you to know right now. Rainbow of Chakra Centers. Oh, I think there was a comment from Martin that your um, your planetary associations were similar to the chakras. Um, yeah, the chakras are the, the coordinating those two is is tricky business, of course, because I think each chakra has multiple planets that I think that are strong around that. You know, the lower chakras, you got Pluto, you got Venus, you got, you know, depending on security chakras, got Saturn. But really, ultimate security is Pluto. The ability to align with the Tao, even if you don't have a penny in your pocket, you don't know where you're going to sleep tonight. If you're aligned with the Tao, you're secure. You know? Absolutely. The yin and yang, right? The original science is yin and yang and, and the mm -hmm. Tao. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Richard. That was, again, magnificent and insightful and every level of consciousness. And if anybody here today would like to experience a personal reading with Richard and anybody watching this on video as a replay, how can we get in touch with you, Richard? Yep, I had deliberately years ago when Rob Bresney, the free will astrologers, you know, uh, uh, syndicated throughout North, North America, I came up with a, an easy email address, which is yumplanet at yahoo.com. Um, I have a zillion email addresses, but that's the easiest one to, to remember. Can for spell uh, that out for people who are... Yeah, yum, Y-U-M, planet, P-L-A-N-E-T, at yahoo.com. Awesome, awesome. Well, I encourage everybody. I have known Richard. How long have we known each other, Richard? Well, uh, over 25 years. Over 25 years. And Richard has been a phenomenal uh, spirit guide on the earth for me. And I have had wonderful readings with Richard that have helped guide me. And what they're, what's amazing about them is when you go back and listen to them years later, there's something new or there's another aha. Um, so the multi-layers of, of consciousness and, um, and frequency that Richard channels combined with his incredible knowledge is a beautiful gift to give yourself. Uh, so it is 11.55. And uh, we are yeah, going to... one last sentence. Oh. I've, I speak to your being, not your mind. I speak to yeah. all of you. OK, my degree is in creative writing. So that's how, you know, how I use language. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and um, it's a multidimensional um, experience to have your reading done uh, with with Richard. Um, so I encourage everybody to to gift yourself and, and others, you know, with that. But um, again, it's 11.56. So uh, anybody that has to leave at 12, no problem. But we are going to end, um, as we always do, to, to become more centered, connected, and conscious. Um, I will channel long-distance Reiki to the group. And Richard will share a guided uh, visual meditation exercise. 
And then if anybody wants to stay after, um, then I open up time for more one-on-one -on -one discussion. And so are you ready, Richard? Mm, always, yeah. <laughs> so let's all take a nice deep breath. Yeah. And imagine yourself in a beautiful place in perfect health in every way. And that infinite river of gold and white light coming in, healing every cell in your body. So let's mute and Richard will take it away. All right. So we're letting in, we're letting ourselves feel, which is what this is about. Letting ourselves realize and receive on a whole other level of knowing than our ordinary level of knowing. We're letting the infinite generosity of the universe knock on our door. We're saying goodbye to other visitors and we're saying hello to the supreme fulfillment that is just giving itself to us because it is us. That underneath the personality, underneath all the circumstance, underneath all the relationships is just this radiant well-being that is our true nature. It is reality. It is heaven within. It is the pearl of great price. It is the treasure that thieves can't break in and steal and moth and rust don't corrupt. It is this endless flow of fulfillment and it can start very subtle. You know, as Jesus said, it's like a mustard seed. It starts subtle and we just let ourselves feel a little more, drink a little bit more, sip of this perfection and know that the perfection, us, we can get distracted, but it's there to return to over and over again and ready to grow in, into everything that we want experientially. And as we feel that fulfillment, automatically what we want comes to us, often instantaneously. So we let in that we have a perfect destiny. We let in that we are totally abundant. And that that abundance is inside and it attracts its mirror outside. We let in, we hand over all problems, all concerns, all desires. All, anything that we could preoccupied by, we hand it over. And we let the answers to everything we could ever want come to us naturally. With each breath, we allow our hearts to open to receive. And whether it's something coming to us or something coming through us to the world from that perfection, and it sometimes it's not even an action. It's just looking at someone. It's just being there, radiating that acceptance, radiating that respect, radiating that well-being, radiating that sense of ourselves as something more than the body, more than the personality, more than everything that comes and goes. We let in and allow ourselves to be surprised by joy to be surprised by insight out of nowhere, to be surprised by actions that just come through us like dance. We let ourselves receive heaven on earth in whatever dose we let ourselves receive it. We let ourselves feel the radiance of our being and just be and go to deeper and more beautiful levels of being the doing will just come and the doing will be perfect from this place. Full of passion and yet full of surrender. Full of freedom and yet full of love and care for others without being entangled in their drama. Feel that inner freedom to experience anything we could ever want. Feel that the intelligence wants to give us something even better than our best wishes. Feel that who we are is, is more brilliant than our greatest ego trip. We are more amazing than our most grandiose fantasies. To feel, just feel, just let in, just allow that which is already perfect. That which is already successful. That which is already satisfying. 
and know that we are the fountain of that. And every time we detach from the movie and go back to that beauty inside us, we automatically bring that beauty. And we get freed from having to have our fallible ego mind guide our life. We let perfection come in gradually, come in, take over our lives, and give us the life that we came here to live and to be now. Per omnia secula seculorum, which is Latin for forever and ever. And just hand over all of our greatest passions. Honor them. Allow them. Let them in. Let them go. Let them happen. Let's take a nice deep breath. And slowly return. Well, thank you for everything, Richard. Thank you for the beautiful guided meditation at the end and for all your gifts and for who you are and and sharing with all of us. And so I'm going to stay on if anybody would like to uh, continue. And um, we're here to support you and to have community. So any questions, any questions? contributions, any comments that you'd like to share with the group, anybody? <laughs>